Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 28th of May, now it's half past 11, middle of the day by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. There are quite a few very significant developments that you may find interesting, but before I start, let me make a little announcement. Uh, as I said uh, in my yesterday's update, today me and my family members are traveling from Moscow region to North Ossetia region. Road will take uh, about two days. So because of it, I won't be able to make updates tomorrow and uh, Tuesday. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, but uh, after these two days, I will continue work uh, on this channel as I always do, uploading daily updates and of course by the way once we are in North city i will definitely try to make um, some extra content uh, not just for uh, patreon uh, subscribers but also for main channel and uh, during this summertime i will definitely try to uh, create additional pages on uh, other platforms also like uh, odyssey like locals and some others so that's been that's been said um, let's talk about news now and uh, this is ria Novosti's report about second tour of uh, presidential elections in turkey i believe this uh, topic will be major news uh, all around the world because these elections are probably historical uh, elections because if Erdogan will stay in power, if uh, if Erdogan will receive a majority of votes and he will manage to stay in power, because we all know Western elites don't really want to see Erdogan in presidential office. But yet again, if Erdogan will receive majority of votes and he will manage and his government will manage to stay in power, then probably not much will change in relationships between uh, Turkey and neighboring countries and uh, Turkey's uh, uh, role and position on global stage. But if uh, opposition candidate, um, candidate Kemal Kalic Daroglu will uh, become uh, next president of Turkey, that will definitely have a huge impact on uh, Turkish, not just internal policy, but foreign policy. Uh, Turkey will probably move uh, f towards uh, Western uh, elites and Turkey will start conducting its policies according to demands from Western elites. And in that case, relationships between Turkey and Russia, Turkey and uh, Iran, Turkey and uh, many other countries in this region and uh, in the world will probably change dramatically. So that's why I think um, these elections are historic ones, historical ones. And uh, yes, let's see how will how will uh, situation develop. I hope uh, elections will take place peacefully and there will be no internal turmoil in Turkey because this region is uh, troublesome enough so there is no need for any additional complications. So that's the main major news. That's going to be major news, at least for uh, this region, for sure. Uh, let me continue now. This is Commerçant newspaper's report about Russian drone strikes during the previous night. Um, according to information that uh, we are getting from media and uh, uh, Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Russian side did conduct quite large uh, drone strikes during the previous night. Uh, military and logistical uh, infrastructure of Zelensky's regime was targeted all around Ukraine from western regions to eastern and southern, southern regions. Uh, Mayor of Kiev uh, did even uh, stated that uh, during the previous night, Russian side conducted largest drone strike since the beginning of uh, special military operation. I cannot confirm this uh, information because uh, Russian side did not provide yet uh, 
official information. Uh, Russian Defense Ministry will probably have a press conference a little bit late in the afternoon, but uh, anyway, uh, I will not trust uh, any statements from Zelensky's regime anyway, in any case. And by the way, one of the reasons why I don't trust them is that uh, they usually are saying, and today is no exception, that they are shutting down, they are destroying 90-95% of uh, aerial targets. So how can you trust when they are making these kind of uh, statements? In my understanding, Zelensky's regime is able to shut down about 30 to 40% of aerial targets. Uh, 50% at best. So in that case, uh, at least 50% of Russian drones, 50 to 60% Russian drones and missiles are hitting targets. So that's my take. On, that's my take on it. And lately, of course, we all noticed that Russian side is very active, very active to uh, take out uh, logistical and military infra infrastructure of Zelensky's regime. And drone strikes and missile strikes are happening almost on daily basis, which is quite understandable because, uh, as we know, Washington and London especially are demanding from Zelensky's regime uh, to be uh, large-scale counteroffensive uh, in direction of Azov Sea to be gone, to cut this land bridge between Crimea and uh, Russia, mainland Russia, and uh, I guess uh, Russian militaries are just uh, playing safe and try to trying to destroy as many ammunition depots and uh, military warehouses of Zelensky's regime as possible, quite successfully, I will I will say. And uh, um, that's that development is one of the reasons why I'm I'm constantly saying that there will be no large scale uh, counteroffensive for Zelensky's regime because they don't have uh, manpower, they don't have military equipment and ammunition to do so, but because they have about 70 80,000 80, reserves that are concentrated uh, last reserves that they have that are concentrated in uh, Kherson region in Zaporozhye region in the Dnipropetrovsk region this force is uh, quite enough to conduct some local scale offensive operations and i believe uh, zelensky and his associates uh, will have no other option other than uh, start uh, these uh, offensive operations in direction of this uh, land bridge, even if they are absolutely sure that this will be suicidal mission for them. And uh, once Russian side will stop these offensive operations and uh, destroy these brigades ukrainian brigades that will participate in uh, offensive operations uh, once that will happen then uh, zelensky's regime days of zelensky's regime will be numbered and uh, ukrainian armed forces uh, will uh, cease to exist as more or less uh, capable entity so as i said even if uh, zelensky's regime do understand all this especially his military leaders and they do uh, probably. I don't uh, think they have options here. They are servants of Western elites and uh, eventually they will be forced to conduct these uh, operations and sacrifice these last reserves that they have. And by the way, question is rising why uh, Washington and uh, London are pushing so hard Zelensky's regime to, con to start this suicidal operation. And uh, to be honest, I, I, when I was thinking about it, I come up with uh, I come up with a um, uh, scenario in which uh, in which maybe just maybe Washington and London they do already understand that uh, this fight with Russia they lost, and now. Uh, now they are uh, trying to uh, speed up processes in Ukraine and that way uh, bring end of this conflict uh, closer and I guess uh, because they are uh, because they are basically 
demanding from Zelensky's regime to sacrifice Ukrainian armed forces. I guess this has been done to make sure that uh, once Poland and some other Western neighbors of uh, Ukraine enter this conflict openly and try to establish control over the Western parts of Ukraine here, they will have no resistance from Ukrainian side. Maybe that's the case, because it's just too, too obvious that US and British military leadership clearly understands that uh, uh, if Zelensky regime will conduct now offensive operations, they will lose last reserves and basically they will lose any chances to uh, continue more or less uh, effective, uh, effective defensive operations. To hold the line, to put it mildly. <coughs> so maybe what we are uh, observing now is that uh, Washington and London, they do understand that uh, Ukraine will be divided between the neighboring uh, countries with Ukraine, between Russia, Poland, Romania, maybe Slovakia. And they are now just trying to speed up this process so that conflict will uh, end. Because this conflict did uh, serve its purpose for Western elites. They did provoke this conflict to make sure that Western states are uh, militarized. They are beginning to militarize and uh, this is happening clearly. We can see that defense uh, budgets uh, of NATO, European NATO member states are rising increasingly. Uh, we are seeing that uh, U.S. is uh, once again uh, spending more and more on military equipment. We did see that U.S. and the uh, U.K. leadership of U.S. U.K. did manage to destroy relationships between uh, European states and Russia. So basically, Washington and London did achieve all their goals that they have, almost all. Maybe not all, but almost all main goals that they had when they provoked this conflict. So now they will probably speed up processes. And they, I don't think they will be against uh, disintegration of Ukraine because they never cared about Ukraine. So that's my reading of picture. Maybe Washington and London wants this conflict to end as soon as possible. So they are pushing Zelensky's regime now to... Uh, sacrifice their last reserves so that once uh, Poland and some other neighboring countries from the West will uh, establish control over the Western regions, they will have no resistance or not that much resistance from Ukrainian side and the rest of the Ukraine will become under control of Russia. And by the way, maybe already uh, has taken place uh, uh, some negotiations behind the scenes between Moscow, Washington, London, Brussels, Warsaw, for example, and some other capitals to end this conflict exactly this way, by dividing Ukraine so that Western regions will end up uh, under control of Hungary, Poland, Romania, possibly Slovakia, and the rest of the Ukraine uh, will become uh, under control of Russia and eventually part of Russian Federation. At least this way I can explain why Washington and London are pushing so hard <coughs> excuse me, Zelensky and his associates to begin this basically suicidal uh, counteroffensive operations. Because I, I'm not going to believe that uh, military leadership of UK and uh, uh, US are so incompetent that they don't understand that the Russian side will just decimate those last uh, reserves. They do understand this and they're still pushing Zelensky's regime to conduct this operation. So there must be reasoning behind it. And I come up with uh, this scenario that I just shared with you. They are trying to now close to the end this conflict and uh, and uh, disintegrate Ukraine 
between the you know neighboring and divide Ukraine be between its neighboring countries. So let me continue now. And uh, this is, by the way, uh, you 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 may find this information quite uh, funny and 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 sad also because uh, Biden did made statement that um, he had achieved some uh, success with negotiations with uh, Kevin McCarthy, leadership leader of uh, Republicans, and. Um, According to the agreement, uh, this ceiling of foreign debt, <coughs> excuse me, will will rise, and there will be no default in U.S. Which is oh, such a surprise! I mean, we didn't knew it, and we didn't expect it, isn't it? Oh, it's 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 uh, unbelievable, man. Of course, we all knew that this is exactly what will happen, and I I, I spoke about it so many times during previous updates and. Probably everyone who is paying any attention to news and polit politics uh, did know that uh, all this uh, back and forth between Republicans and Democrats were just a game. And eventually they will, of course, agree to uh, rise price, uh, rise uh, ceiling for uh, foreign debt. So they will continue printing dollars. Uh, and... Uh, receive basically borrow more and more money <clears throat> and what is unfortunate that uh, this uh, kind of uh, show highlights attitude of uh, western elites in general and u.s elites in this particular case their attitude towards ordinary citizens because i do understand that people that did pay attention to news and political uh, uh, news and politics knew from the very beginning what will happen, but not everyone does pay attention to news and politics constantly. And I guess uh, hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of citizens of US probably were scared that uh, US may collapse now, US economy may collapse and uh, US may default and some, some devastation may happen because that's headlines that US media and Western media in general was coming up, isn't it? And why? Why they are scaring their own citizens, for God's sake? Do those citizens, ordinary citizens, don't have enough problems already? Why, why they are uh, scaring people and why, why they are uh, pushing people into the depression? But once again, man, this, this kind of attitude demonstrates that they don't care. They just don't care about ordinary citizens. And never did. That's it. So, so when it, from point of view, you know, news-wise, of course, this information for us, uh, it's not really news because we, we knew from very beginning that this will happen. But why they were scaring ordinary people, man? that uh, oh, we are also ordinary for god's sake why they are scaring people that did not pay attention to news and politics and uh, this is uh, once again just demonstrates attitude of the so-called elites towards uh, life of people uh, as you know some u.s delegation is in uh, in ukraine right now among them senator lancy graham and just let me share with you this fragment. I hope sound will... Free or die. Free or die. Now you are free. Yes. And we will be. And the Russians are dying. It's the best money we've ever spent. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, it's... So I hope so you did hear sound. I cannot because mic is on. And um, basically what he says that... Uh, Russians are dying in this conflict uh, and uh, that's why he is happy and he think, uh, thinks uh, US taxpayers' money have been well well spent because the written he is smiling, I mean, uh, this is truly sick, this is sickening. Normal people cannot smile uh, on death of uh, other people, it's just not how humans operate 
but this uh, creature here definitely needs some medical attention uh, definitely because just look at it man this is i mean disgrace for humanity this kind of uh individuals man so that's once again demonstrates what kind of people are in leadership of uh western states in us in this uh, particular case and uh, i'm quite sure this uh, creature don't cares not just about russian lives but he don't care about any lives of uh, ordinary citizens whatsoever and he don't care about u.s citizens he don't care about just anybody except his own <coughs> piggy life because he is a pig man he's not even human this pig and his piglets that's all he, all he cares about so how you can how on earth anybody can respect this kind of animals man i just don't understand and who who votes for this kind of uh, animals man how but it is what it is man um, unfortunately uh, this this these criminals these bloodthirsty criminals are destroying not just world but they are destroying us itself within they are destroying us within and uh, i don't know when us when majority of us citizens will wake up and see what is going on but uh, they should wake up before it's not too late though they should wake up and by the way this is gonna be last news for uh for today's um short update this is lentarus report about um, statements of uh high-ranking chinese representative li huei who said uh, who spoke once again about peace in, uh, negotiations between the russian side and ukrainian side he articulated how important it is to push this narrative towards peace so that this conflict will end and uh, during uh, his um, speech he said that uh, these new regions one of the ways to achieve peace is to make sure uh, that uh, uh, that standards are set from the very beginning and uh, Russia will knew from the very beginning that he will retain all these new regions. And of course, uh, these kind of statements, at least for now, will not go down well among Western elites, because openly they are not talking about yet, about uh, future division of Ukraine between the neighboring countries. But because... Uh, high-ranking Chinese representative is mentioning this topic. I guess, once again, this is for me indicator that behind the scenes, uh, capitals of uh, leading countries in this world already had some, uh, some negotiations and they already knew, they already know how this conflict will end. And in my understanding, this conflict will end, uh, as I said many times before, by... This conflict will end by uh, division of uh, disintegration, full disintegration of Ukraine and Western regions of Ukraine become part of Hungary, Poland, uh, Romania and possibly Slovakia. And the rest of the Ukraine will become under control of Russia and eventually part of Russian Federation. There are slight chance that Kiev and the uh, surrounding areas may remain as a state on the name of ukraine but uh, to be honest i don't see reasoning why moscow should allow this to happen because uh, if in, in that case you will have no guarantees for long-term peace so i guess uh, we, we already have some indications 
uh, to at, at least try to see uh, this big picture and how this conflict will end and and when and i guess uh, we are closing to that to that point and if not before end of this year in the first half of uh, 2024 this conflict will definitely end that's my take on it anyway so that's been said uh, that's been said this is it for uh, for today's uh, relevantly short update i hope you will find this video uh, interesting and uh, if so please hit that like button leave some commentary about any topic you like um, share links to my videos or my uh, page to my channel uh, video friends on telegram twitter facebook or any other platform that you are active on and uh, if you think if you think this channel is interesting useful and has some potential please consider to support with small donations through paypal buy me a coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page that's been said um, yes this is it for now um, I will be on the road for next two days and then I will continue uh, making updates on, on as I always do. So this is it. Have a great day. I wish you a successful new week and take care.